There we go. So, um, and once we are done going over the Nearpod things from yesterday, then you have a matching assignment for Nearpod. And I can go over that in more detail when we get towards the end. So, the more you respond, the faster we're going to go, which should encourage you to make sure that you're participating and responding. I'm not looking for correct answers. I just want to see your thinking and for you to work on explaining your thinking. So don't be afraid that you're going to get it wrong or anything like that. Because again, this is still very new. So we are still learning together. I'm going to start by sharing. Uh, these are things that y'all turned in. Um, I'm going to keep the names hidden for privacy, but I wanted to take some of our very own students' work and show off what they did and then have some conversations about them as well. So we're gonna start with this one and I'm gonna start off by talking, but then I'm gonna put it off on you. You guys are gonna to need to start talking, okay? So the first little bit, um, this person did really great. So they, I can see counted each of these squares right here because they have those little orange dots that they clicked. And they gave us two fractions right here. So I'm going to explain how I think they came up with the, this fraction right here. And then I'm gonna ask for y'all to tell me how they came up with this fraction, okay? I know this is what we went over on Tuesday, but I just wanted to make sure that we um, kind of go over it again. So 10 hundredths right here. And I see that they counted there are 10 of these little squares right here out of this hundred um, grid right here. So there were 10 shaded out of 100. So whenever you see that fraction bar, you can say in your head out of. So 10 out of 100 are shaded. So that's one way that they um, got that fraction. Can anybody raise their blue hand and volunteer to explain how you think they got this fraction? All right, so Myra, how do you think they came up with this fraction based on that picture? I think they came up with this fraction is because 10 hundred equals to 10. It is, and what was that special word that you used? 10 hundreds? Yeah, 10 hundreds. And then we're, you're talking about this fraction right here. So how did they come up with this fraction? How did they come up with one tenth right here? Awesome. So she's gonna have to log in with her rapid. Perfect. So. Don't annotate until I give you permission, but that's not quite it. Let's look at this picture right here and see how they saw the fraction one-tenth. So you're right, when we, when we um, find fractions that have the same value, we can multiply and divide them, the numerator and the denominator by the same thing. You're absolutely right with that. But I want more of a, an explanation as to how you can look at this picture and get that fraction. They look at it as one-tenth, please. Like a ten. One tenth. It is one tenth. You're right, but how how is it one tenth? In the tens place. We don't have a we don't have a place value chart up here. That's see that. I think your brain is just like already ahead of us, Samira. So I need we're gonna step back a couple of steps. You're ahead. So can I have? Um, Josiah, would you mind trying to explain how they came up with one tenth? How does this picture show one tenth? Just looking at the picture. It came up with one tenth because there's one tenth bar in out of the 100. There we go. Thank you. There's one bar. That's what Josiah called it is a bar. I'm going to call it a column because it's up and down. Um, you can also think of it as a tens rod. One of those is shaded in out of, there's 10 of them. So there's one here, there's another one here, two, three, four, five, y'all know 100 squared, there are 10 of them. 
So there's one shaded out of 10. So that's how we got the two different fractions. Does anybody know what we call these fractions with the equal sign? 10 hundredths and 1 tenth. What's that, what's that word we call them? What's our math word? Let's stay on mute until we get caught on. Genesis, do you remember what that word is? Equivalent. Yes, great job. Yes, those are equivalent fractions. Awesome. All right, so now we're going to move on to this decimal right here. Can anybody read this decimal? Does anyone want to try to read this decimal? All right, Miss Leyland, go ahead and try to read that decimal. So that decimal is um, so that decimal is. I'm pretty sure it's tenths. Okay, I see this number ten right here. You're on to something. All right, here, Leyland, read this fraction. You want to read that fraction for me? Go ahead. Ten one hundredths. Ten hundredths. So how do you think you say this decimal? Ten hundredths? Yes! Good job, good job! Yes, that's exactly it. So remember, our fractions are going to sound the exact same as our decimal. The only thing that might be a little bit different is if you say zero and, and then say ten hundredths there. So whenever we read our decimals, we read the number right here. So this number is 10. And then we have to say the place value that the last digit is in. So this is the last digit and that is in the hundredths place because this is the ones, the tenths, and then the hundredths. So 10 hundredths. Great job. All right. We are going to go ahead and go to another one that uh, is pretty similar to this. And thank you for those of you who maybe are feeling like this is a review from Tuesday. We are going to move into some more uh, deeper things, but I like starting with what we have already discussed. All right, I'm going to find where to go. Right here. Oh, no, that's not it. I can't find it. Here. So this person. Um, also decided to write a fraction and this decimal and they match. They did a good job. Do I have a volunteer that can re like explain to me how they came up with this fraction looking at this picture? Go ahead, Jamari. I think um, there's 20 columns out of 100. There are, so the column is this whole thing. So it's not 20 columns, but yes, there are 20 of those pieces shaded in out of 100. You're totally right. 20 of those, we'll call them little um, squares. That's probably the easiest thing to call them. And sorry, I see someone put something in the chat. I wanted to make sure. Oh, thank you, Genesis, for participating in the chat. Great job. So thank you, Jamari. That was great. There are 20 shaded in out of 100. And now can I have a volunteer read this fraction? How do we say this fraction right here? I'm looking for friends. Mr. Lee, would you read this fraction for us, please? Which one? This one right here. Can you read this fraction? 20 hundredths. Excellent. 20 hundredths. So how do you think you would say this decimal right here? Zero and 20. Zero and 20. And then what's the place value it's in? 20 what? Hundreds. <gasps> yes! Score! That's awesome! And I love how Lee added in the zero and. He remembered our decimal says and. Great job. Zero and 20 hundredths. Okay, so I have another one I want us to look at um, on this next slide. So this person didn't completely answer the way they were supposed to, and, and that's okay. Um, they're going to be a great teaching example for us.
So I want to look at this one. So they gave us a fraction, but they did not give us a decimal. So, and I'm going to go ahead and confirm that this fraction is correct. Can someone go ahead and explain to us how this fraction matches this picture? Haley, I haven't heard from you. Go ahead and I see your hand raised. Thank you. Will you go ahead and explain how this fraction here matches this picture? The fraction matches because some, so some people might not think it matches exactly, but it's just reduced. Oh, I love that vocabulary word, reduce. But the fraction is, so seven are shaded and three of the rows are not. Awesome, and thank Which you for saying rows too. Would be seven tenths or seven one hundred. Seven tenths or what was the other fraction you said? Seven one hundredths. So are seven tenths and seven hundredths the same thing? I'm just curious. Yes. Okay. It just reduced to lower. Um, so I'm gonna write what I think I heard you say. So I heard you say seven. Did you say seven hundred? Like this. Is that what you said, Haley? Okay. So Haley's on to something. She said that they have seven rows shaded in. So like this is one row and then there are seven of them all shaded in. This is the seventh one and there are 10 total rows. So she said seven out of 10 are shaded in. So and then she said this is a reduced fraction. We could also look at it out of 100. So if, we, if we're looking at out of 100, we're gonna be looking at these little squares right here. So I'm gonna ask you how many of these little squares are actually shaded in out of 100? And anybody can put it in the chat. Or Haley, go ahead. That would be did you say shaded in or not shaded in? Shaded in, mm-hmm. 70. 70, so we're actually gonna say this is equivalent to 70 hundredths, there you go. I think that's what you meant to say anyways. Yeah. Definitely, so thank you for pointing out how this fraction represents this shaded in grid right there. All right, the next thing that I want us to do is kind of ignore this for now. This is correct, I want us to ignore. I want us to focus in on this fraction right here. Who thinks they can write a, a decimal that matches this fraction? Go ahead, Nellie. You can annotate on my screen and write under here, what do you, or what decimal would match the fraction 7 tenths? I just kind of gave you a hint. Okay, thank you for sharing that decimal with us, Nellie. All right, oh no, no, leave it up there, please. We're gonna have a conversation about it. There you go, will you erase that other decimal that you accidentally wrote, please? Just so we're not getting confused. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, do you, there we go, okay. So in the chat, I want you to put yes or no, but listen to the question first. Do you agree that this decimal represents this fraction? Or I should say matches that 
satisfaction. So yes or no. Does this decimal match this fraction? And be thinking in your head of being able to explain why, like how do you know it matches? I'm gonna wait until I get some more responses from everybody in class, thank you. Only need to respond one time, thank you. Thank you, Samira, Mackenzie, Haley, Fumi, Genesis, Leyland. I still haven't heard from some people. Do you agree that this decimal matches this fraction? All right. All right, Miss Fumi, I'm gonna pick on you, okay? <laughs> and it's out of love. So Fumi, originally you said yes, and then you're like, wait, maybe not. So Fumi, will you take yourself off of mute and kind of talk us through what you're thinking about? Oh, you're on mute, sweetheart. There you go. Uh, I think it's no because um, 0 0.70 is for like hundreds and not, but and seventies in the tens place and zero is in the ones place. But it should actually since there's only two digits in the ten, I think it should be zero point seven. What was that last part that I heard you say? Can you repeat it one more time? Ten only has two digits. I think that zero point seven is the actual Okay, would you write that on the screen, please? Would you write that decimal? So they can get a visual too. And we're gonna discuss what Fumi was thinking. Oh, okay, thank you, Fumi. All right, so Fumi, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I heard you say that this decimal does represent this picture but this decimal goes with this fraction, 70 hundredths. Because if we were gonna say it, we would say zero and, then we have 70 and the last digit is in the hundredths place. So this would be zero and 70 hundredths, which matches this fraction. And Thumi saying that this decimal right here, this yellow one, is what matches this fraction because you would say zero and seven and then it's in the tenths place. So you would say zero and seven tenths and this fraction is seven tenths. Fumi, is that what you were saying? Yes. Okay, thank you for sharing that and sharing your thinking. Um, so both girls wrote fractions and decimals that represent this picture but I want to make sure that we understand that this decimal is absolutely correct. It does show this picture. There are 70 hundredths in this picture shaded in. But if we want it to match exactly, 70 hundredths would match this fraction, 70 hundredths, because remember they should sound the same when we read them out loud. And so 7 tenths, this decimal would show seven tenths because this, we only have one seven in the tenths place. So I know that was a little bit confusing or could have been confusing. Does anyone have any follow-up questions for that? I still have some hands up and I'm not sure if it's from wanting to volunteer or if it's questions that you have. Okay. I'm not seeing any hands raised or any questions. All right, great job, Fumi and Nelly. Y'all did wonderful. So proud of you. 
Genesis, do you have a question? No. Okay. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and do another one. So thank you so much for volunteering and working with me. Y'all are doing great. So this next one is tricky. Um, so I'm actually going to show you a couple of different examples for this one because it was really hard and no one person got the whole thing right that I have seen on here. But I have some really great examples that I want to talk through with you. So this one right here, this person saw that this whole hundreds grid was shaded in. So they went ahead and labeled it as one whole, which was excellent. And they showed that as well over here with their decimal. They said there was one whole or one in the ones place. And then they took the second grid right here and they recognized that there was 54 shaded in out of 100. So they said 5,400. So one and 5,400. So their decimal is correct. However, their fraction is not. So I see what they were coming from. They saw, oh, there's a total of 200 here because I know this is 100 and I know this is 100. So they thought the, de the denominator was 200 and there was 154 shaded in. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna draw you another picture that looks a little bit more familiar with what you're used to looking at for fractions. And I want you guys to come up with the correct fraction for this. So let's pretend they're circles. And I'm just going to divide them into fourths because that's the easy one. We're used to working with fourths. So let's say, and y'all can laugh at my shading because it's really bad. So let's say we had these two circles and this whole one was shaded in right here, and then one piece of this one over here was shaded in. Does anybody want to say or write how we would write this fraction? And let's do it as a mixed number if we could. Go ahead, Maeve. Where does Say that again, sweetheart. I said, wait a second. I need okay. to do something really quick. Okay. Do you want to annotate on the screen and write that fraction out for us as a mixed number? Would that be like one whole and one fourth? I think so. Yes, ma'am, that would be. Okay. Sorry, I kind of uh, brain farted yeah. and forgot what uh, what a mixed number was. No, you are totally fine. I know we're having to kind of refresh our memories since we had that whole summer and COVID stuff. Totally fine. Would you mind writing that on the screen? Excellent. Thank you so much, Maeve. Great job. So if this fraction represents this, do I have a volunteer that thinks that they can write a fraction to represent these grids right here? So let's use that same concept of this whole one is shaded in, so we have one whole, and then we have one out of four pieces shaded in, so we have one fourth. Hey, Colin, what do you think? What do you think, Colin? All 
right. Let's make sure we're attentive and meeting all of our Zoom expectations. Um, Mackenzie, I haven't heard from you. Do you mind trying to give us a fraction that you think represents this uh, shaded end part of the grids? Uh, could you give me more time to think? Absolutely, I can. Here, I'll be quiet for about 15 seconds and give everybody some time to form what fraction they think represents the shaded end part. Okay. Mackenzie, was that enough time for you or do you need some more time? Uh, I'm kind of struggling to think about it, so I think I need more time. Okay. Do you mind if I kind of like walk you through it and walk everyone through it together? Does that sound uh, good? Yeah. All right. Please do. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So this whole grid is shaded in, correct? This one right here. So when we have one hole shaded in, how do we represent that in a fraction? You write it as a whole number. So that one whole, just like how Maeve wrote the one over here separate and big and not as a fraction, she wrote this as a whole number. So we would do the same thing with this one. This hole is shaded in, just like how this hole was shaded in. So we have one hole and then we have a fractional piece over here. And we would do this just like what you've been doing. So if you, if you could pretend not to see the shaded in grid over here and you just had this one, what fraction would you write for this grid? Mackenzie, do you know? Yeah, I'm still trying to think. I need to count all of them first. Okay, so this is gonna be a hundreds grid. So it's gonna have 100 in it every single time. So could you tell me the denominator? Uh, I still don't know, I'm sorry. No, you're fine, no need to apologize at all. So this has 100 in it, total squares. So 100 is going to be our denominator. And then our numerator, our top number, is going to be how many are shaded in. And we can see that we have one row, two rows, three rows, four rows, five, I'm saying rows, it's really columns, I'm sorry guys. Five columns shaded in, so that's 50, and then one, two, three, four. So I would have 54 shaded in out of 100. So this is one hole, that whole thing is shaded in right there and 54 out of 100 shaded in, so 54 hundredths. So one and 54 hundredths is how we would say that mixed number. And then whenever we go to say our decimal, it should sound the same, and it does. It says one and 54, and it's in the hundredths place, so one and 54 hundredths. Okay. Okay, I think I understand now, thank you. Yeah, thank you for being such a good sport, Mackenzie, and not just like being quiet. Because some people, if they didn't know, they would just sit there and pretend not to hear me. So I really appreciate you talking through with me. That's so brave, and I'm really proud of you. All right, guys. So that one was a really tough one, and I saw some confused faces, and I saw some people who weren't even paying attention. So let's make sure we are paying attention, and I want some honest answers in the chat. Because remember, only I can see this. So 
I want you to tell me either good, okay, or bad for how you're feeling about this right now or your understanding. Good, okay, bad. So if you feel comfortable just showing me your thumb, you can do that. But if you want it to be more private, you can send me good, okay, bad in the chat. How are you feeling about this? Thank you for your honesty. Okay. Thank you for your honest answers. So it's sounding like most of us are not feeling super confident about this yet, and that's totally okay. Thank you for being honest because that helps me to understand what I need to do. All right, let's do one more together. I'm sorry, I don't like me talking the whole time. I know that gets boring. So I am gonna do one more and I'm gonna ask for your help. Um, and then I'm gonna let you go, okay? So one more, just need your attention for a little bit longer and I will let you go to complete your work. So this next one, let me clear out my drawings. Um, with your thumbs, how are you feeling about ones like these? I feel like y'all understood these pretty good. It was the ones that, it was the one that had a, two grids that might have thrown you off a little bit. Feeling okay, okay. Yeah. I'm trying to read your faces as I'm going through the, the chat and it's hard because not everybody has their videos on. So, I will see, I think there was one more in here that had, let's do this one. I think this one would be a good one for us to do together. All right, I am going to pull this up. So first let's identify the fraction together. What fraction is shaded in right here? Remember how we find our numerator and denominator. It's the number out of the total. You can put it in the chat. Actually, go ahead and put it in the chat. What do you think this, uh, what fraction would represent this picture right here? Thanks, Fumi. Thanks, Samira. Thanks, Genesis and Lee and Maeve. Thank you, Leyland. Thank you, Josiah. <laughs> Thanks, Maeve. Good job, Haley. Thanks, Mackenzie. Nice, Colin. Oh, Samira, you're skipping ahead. But thanks. Okay. Awesome job. Guys, y'all are getting it. You're getting it more than you realize. So, Leyland, would you mind telling us the fraction? And then would you want to annotate on the screen? No? Okay. So, Leyland gave us the fraction six tenths. She did an awesome job. She said six out of ten total are shaded in. Great work. And so now we're going to, oh, that's a terrible six, but y'all know what I'm talking about. So now we're gonna write the decimal. So again, I'm gonna come up here to my place value chart. Um, here we go. So if y'all would look at where I'm speaking and I have the board in the background. Can y'all see that this is the ones place? Here's our decimal. We have our tenths place and we have our hundredths place here. So, um, Haley, would you mind reading this fraction for us that Leyland came up with? Oh, 
That fraction is six tenths. Excellent, six tenths. So now we need our decimal to say the same thing. And that just means putting a six in the tenths place. So zero ones are decimal and six tenths. So if you know the place value, it might help if you write out your place value chart. There is one in your interactive notebook too. So if you like go to my Bitmoji classroom and click on the notebook on that bookshelf, there's a place value chart for you. So use that to help you come up like with the decimal. Does that make sense? You say this fraction in your head, guys, you know how to say the fractions. You're killing it with fractions. So say the fraction six tenths, and that literally tells you what to write for your decimal. Six tenths. All right. So um, for Nearpod today, for your work, you are matching the shaded in grid to a decimal. All right, take your time, do it correctly, because I'm looking to see how much you're understanding. If I'm seeing you're not understanding, we're gonna do some more work with this. But if you're getting it, take your time and show me that and we'll move forward. Okay, guys? If you have questions um, or wanna talk with me, you stay on here. Otherwise, you are free to go and I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Bye. 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 Bye.